Hello everyone, James with TFB TV. If my voice sounds a little bit different than usual, it's because I got a touch, just a touch of the old coronavirus. But the good news is I will be fine. And so will all of you. So stop buying stores out of all the goddamn toilet paper. But let's talk about something that's actually important. The Vepper 12 shotgun. In particular, its suitability as a suppressor host. Some of you may remember that I went out to the Nevada desert with the guys from Arsenal. We took a Vepper 12 and about a half case of double lot buck to the desert, shot the piss out of the thing. It ran perfectly and I absolutely loved shooting this gun. I bought this with my own money. I actually, I'll be honest guys, I tried to angle Arsenal to like maybe send me a T&E copy something I could buy for like cheap. But instead I bought this gun like a regular Schmo and they aren't cheap. You're looking at like $16.99 MSRP. Real quick, if you don't know what the Vepper 12 is, this is an AK pattern shotgun. It's a 12 gauge shotgun built on an RPK light machine gun receiver. That is a one and a half millimeter stamped steel AK receiver. For all intents and purposes, this is an AK except it shoots 12 gauge. We're gonna dip a little bit more intimately into some of the more refined features of this firearm a little bit later in the video, but just let's get the intro out of the way. So the gun provided by Arsenal ran perfectly with double lot buck two and three quarter inch provided by Arsenal. And by the way, every single semi-automatic shotgun on the face of the earth better be able to run if, if only one thing, if only one thing, two and three quarter inch double up buck. So I said, let's test this thing a little bit. What if we get a Silencer Co. Salvo 12, 12 gauge shotgun silencer from Silencer Shop? And if I go and pay a visit to my good buddies at the Guns and Gear store in Minnesota and pick up some ammo that they were going to throw away. That's right, these guys gave me ammo to use in this video that their customers brought in to be disposed of. So look at this ammo, guys. Straight up dog shit. This is old ammo, like 20, 25 year old shotgun ammo. Probably unsafe for me to shoot it, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So I got the Vepper 12 shotgun, I got a Salvo 12 can, and I've got the crappiest 12 gauge ammo I have ever seen in my entire life. How did the gun do? Now before we get to my shooting impressions, let's talk briefly about the Vepper 12. I did a full review of the Vepper 12 a couple of years ago. I will try to remember to link that video here with a card so you can go back and watch that whole thing if you want a more basic and in-depth look at just a standard Vepper 12. Many of you may remember the Saiga 12. You haven't been seeing as many of those around lately, but there are also other AK pattern shotguns that are out there on the market. There are other semi-automatic shotguns, magazine fed shotguns on the market. It's worth the spend to get the Vepper 12 because in my opinion, I think it's the best semi-automatic mag fed shotgun on the market. I had a Saiga 12. It seemed cool, right? On paper. First of all, whenever you get them in, typically they have to be converted. They don't come with like a pistol stock. They have like a traditional shotgun stock on them. If you want bells and whistles, you need to get them added and a lot of gunsmithing. So that was kind of a pain in the ass, but I got mine converted to pistol grip and standard AK furniture, which was just a fixed stock. And then the main thing, the main thing where I was like, that's it, I am done with this shotgun is the fact that it is nearly impossible to load a magazine, a full magazine on a closed bolt with the Vepper 12. It uses rock and lock magazines, just like the AK, where you have to cant the magazines, rock them in and lock them in place. That's really difficult to do with a full magazine because of all that spring pressure on a closed bolt. So you've got all that spring pressure that you're shoving against the bottom of the bolt. It makes it really hard to load a magazine and it diminishes the practicality of it, especially considering it doesn't have a last round bolt hold open either. On top of that, it's got a manually adjustable gas system that you have to adjust for like two and three quarter inch rounds or three inch rounds, and if you don't adjust it properly, then you could potentially damage the receiver. Mine came with a standard top cover, just like a regular AK top cover. You know, you press the takedown button in the back, it pops right off, but it was tempting because they were cheap, but then you had to spend all this money to make it an actual practical shotgun. That didn't bother most people because most people just brought it to the range to blast. 
but if you wanted it to be a practical tactical shotgun, it really wasn't one and it was very, very expensive to make it one. The Vepper 12, on the other hand, has a self-regulating gas system. You don't need to adjust it. I was ready to put this thing to the test using three inch shotgun shells, two and three quarter inch shells, high brass, low brass, with a suppressor. It's got a functioning bolt hold open with a bolt release button. That's kind of cool. It really tells you when the gun goes empty because the bolt release kind of kicks you right at your trigger finger. So it's kind of a neat tactile reminder, hey, you're out of ammo. And straight insert mags with a flared magazine well. So magazine changes really easy whenever you go dry and generally easier than the Saiga 12. It's got a hinge top cover with an optic mount. I mean, is this going to retain zero? Really, yeah, for shotgun purposes. If this were something like a precision rifle, this would not be adequate, but for a shotgun, this is perfect. The Vepper 12 also has a superior folding tube stock. All you have to do is press this little button in on the left-hand side, and then the stock will fold to the left. It's got a threaded barrel with a combo flash hider brake, and I was like, you know what? This would be perfect to test out with the Silencer Co. Salvo 12. So I call the boys at Silencer Shop and I say, guys, I've got this Vepper 12. I really want to screw with it. So do me a favor and send me a Salvo 12 because I want to see how this self-regulating gas system, how it puts up with a suppressor and all this crappy ammo that I've got. The Salvo 12, surprisingly cheap. It is like $679 at the time of this video and you can adjust it. It's modular. So you can adjust it from six inches all the way out to 12 inches by removing and adding baffles. I thought that was going to be a giant pain in the ass and it was a little intimidating at first to remove the baffles because they have to be added and removed in a certain order. And on top of that, you've got these little rods and the rods help to guide the wad out of the shotgun whenever you're shooting it so it doesn't like go clanging around in your baffles. Like what was that old game that, with the ball and you'd bounce it and you were trying to break all the blocks? You guys know what I'm talking about. You guys don't want your shotgun wad doing that inside of your silencer. But anyways, once you figured out kind of like how to work the suppressor and put the rods in there and move the baffles, if you kept the thing cleaned and lubed and got the hang of it, you really only have to do it once or twice and you totally got the hang of it. You could do it without looking at the instruction manual or screwing it up. It, it was pretty intuitive after the first true like tear down and reassembly. So it really was not that bad. Silencer Shop's testing pegged this at, at its lowest, 127 decibels, but I think it was hitting like the mid 130s. It can use any two and three quarter inch wadded shot in a barrel at, that's at least 10 inches long and any three inch wadded shot in a barrel that's at least 16 inches long. Oops. Maybe you guys could tell the difference. That was half and half. Half, two and three quarter inch bird shot and then half three inch magnum number three shot. I definitely shot three inch shells through the Vepper 12 and the Salvo and fortunately it didn't banana peel or anything like that. Nothing strange even happened. Now I'm not telling you to do that. All I'm telling you is that I did it and I didn't die of something not the coronavirus. But how did it sound? Take a listen at the range. Let's see how it sounds. Risking life and limb for you guys. I'm gonna take an ear out, see if this is actually hearing safe. Okay, so it's not pleasant. This isn't as quiet as I wanted it to be, but that's okay, it's still better than nothing. And it also kind of looks badass, right? So as you can see, it's not that bad of a combo. I mean, it's nothing like what was the bad guy from that movie, No Country for Old Men? Bob Sugar. So was it Bob Sugar's silent shotgun? No, it was not, but it did run pretty well. It was definitely hearing safe. It was fun. 
it was really fun and it had a different impulse. I wasn't impressed with anything that wasn't the full 12 inch stack. So I've heard people say the sweet spot is like around the eight inch mark. Oh God, oh my gosh, that could be taken out of context. I like the 12 inch variation of the silencer. I thought it was a great addition, especially when you have it on. I mean, if you have that on a shotgun that's already like 18 inches or 20, 22 inches, that's going to be pretty long. It worked out perfectly on this Vepper 12 with the 12 inch barrel. Pretty handy. And it worked perfectly. I mean, it worked perfectly. I could not be more impressed with the Vepper 12. It ran seriously 100% flawlessly until I got to the lowest of the low brass. And I'm talking about this was some weird Chuck E. Cheese shit. Got some light target loads that look like they're from 1972. Let's see if those will cycle through this Vepper 12. <laughs> so, finally, I've been shooting old ammo. God, this stuff is like for children though. Finally, find some ammo that won't cycle through the Vepper 12 and that's because it is 12 gauge for babies. Um, literally no use for that ammo whatsoever. So I'm not gonna count that against this Vepper 12 at all. Um, in fact, this is primarily, especially in the 12 inch configuration, a defensive shotgun. And there is no way that you're going to be using ammo that pathetic in this gun. I don't care. With anything, two and three quarters, three inches, that was like a normal or especially defensive load, which is the main reason you're gonna have this. Buckshot, double lot, single lot, turkey, slugs, worked flawlessly. And that's with the can hanging on the end of it too. Final thoughts on the Vepper 12 Salvo 12 combo. As far as semi-automatic mag-fed shotguns go, I think the Vepper 12 is as good as it gets. And they've already been banned from import once. Who knows, it could happen again. I think that there is some collector's value. So if you need that extra rationale to push you over the edge to purchase this, there's a good chance that they're gonna go up in value someday because I see them being banned at some point in the future, whether it's by import or through like a gun control ban. With an MSRP of $16.99, this is purely a flex gun, but it also has some practical application as a tactical shotgun. And in fact, Russian special operators use it, according to Wikipedia at least. But I have heard that in several gun circles that this is actually used in a military tactical application, which gives it street cred, obviously. But if you buy it, you don't have to get anything else. It comes out of the box, ready to roll. And in fact, the only accessory that I'd recommend other than say an optic, and for what it's worth, you can mount a light there under the gas block. I would recommend maybe looking at the Salvo 12. Did it blow my mind with how quiet it was? Absolutely not. But was it kind of cool to be able to shoot a full power 12 gauge semi-automatic AK without hearing protection? Bet your ass it was. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of weird video. It was just something that I personally wanted to do because I thought it was kind of a cool idea. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do you want to win a free gun? Stupid question. Of course you do. Go to subscribestar.com slash TFBTV or patreon.com slash TFBTV. Sign up at the five or the $10 level. You are automatically entered to win a free gun every month. We give away one gun for every 500 total supporters that we have. We are this shy. We're at like 1,490 or something as we sit here today. Once we hit 1,500, that means we're giving away three guns a month. Right now we're giving away just two, but we're close to that third one. So get on there. Please help us out. Guys, sign up. It helps us pay for the channel, pay for equipment, pay our talent. We also couldn't do this without our other boys from Las Vegas, Ventura Munitions, the best ammunition store in the face of the entire freaking world, and my best buds at Top Gun Supply, the online shooting sports superstore. Go check them out. Guys, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate you just for watching the video and for making it this far. Did you watch all the way through? That's pretty awesome of you. I haven't died of coronavirus. Hopefully it stays that way. I love you. Take care.